welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ariel, and today we are doing a K-pop music review. We are gonna be doing a music review of Stray Kids' album, Rockstar. Um, and if you see me looking down at any point, it's because I am looking at my notes because people forget things. So <laughs> that's that. But either way, before we get started, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I'll be doing more stuff like this in the future. Um, if you haven't watched my New Year's resolution plan with me type video, I'll have it linked in the cards up there and in the description box. Please go ahead and go watch that to kind of get a gist of what my channel is going to be like for this year of 2024. But now that we're kind of over that, let's go ahead and go on to the album, their latest one called Rockstar. So, overall, I have to say, I really do like the album. Um, I would have to say, I don't know if it's my favorite Stray Kids album, but I do know it's a really good album. And there are actually, like listening to the songs, I really do actually like all the songs on the album. Um, I have no problems with any of them, like uh, the way they sound, the lyrics, none of that. They all seem like really solid songs. So since we're done with how I feel about the album, Overall, let's go ahead and go into the individual songs and their meanings, and then I'll go in about kind of how I feel about each song, etc. So first on the album is the song Megaverse. Welcome to the Stray Kids Hot Megaverse. Now, I really do like this song a lot. I think it's a great opener. Um, I think, you know, sometimes with some albums, it's just even not just K-pop, but kind of all together. It's kind of thrown together without really any thought of like an opening song or exit song or the order of songs. But I really do think that in this album overall, I really do like the ordering of the songs and I also do like the opener, Megaverse. I really actually do like this song a lot. It's not my favorite song in the album and we'll get to that later, but I really do like this song a lot. Um, now let's go into the meaning of this song. The meaning of the song isn't that deep. Um, it just talks about making your own way and basically winning. And then like they talk a lot about, about the naysayers and how they do not matter because they are, because they make their own rules and follow their own path. And I think it's a great song and a great meaning that, you know, uh, haters are gonna be haters. Let's just put it out there and to not listen to the haters because we are on our own journey and our own path in life in general. Um, and they don't have any jurisdiction over our lives, our goals, and what we create or what we do with our lives. And this could like, this really isn't just about making music and stuff like this. This can just be about life in general. Like so many times I would worry so much more about like, especially when starting my YouTube channel and then like posting on social media, posting on TikTok and stuff. I was, was very conscious of how like other people will see me or how my family would see me. And now it's just like, listen, I gotta create my own path. I gotta create my own lane. I can't be too worried or too worried about what other people may say or what other people may think. I have to just care about how I feel and how I feel about the things that I create. So I really think it's a great song and it's a great, it's a great opener song as well. Um, another interesting thing about this is there's no intro and there is no like interlude which um is okay it's not staring every song i mean every album but i think this is just a mini album if i'm not mistaken so i don't necessarily there, there are technically eight songs in this album but one of them is la 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 the rock version and you know I, honestly there's like seven songs so i think i would call this more of a mini album so um yeah, now that we're done with that first song on the album, let's go ahead and go over to our second song on the album, which is the title track song for this album, which is called La 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 La. Welcome to the 
<laughs> so um i actually really do like this song a lot as well it's not my favorite but um i will say though i do listen to the rock version of this song more than i do the title track which is the more polished version which i understand why they put out the polished version but when you have an album called rock star and you have a title track song called la 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 personally me i was i assumed that the title track song would sound like the rock version of the song that's just where my mind went when i was thinking of the concept photos and when i was thinking of just the word rock star just a little backstory on me just a little bit you know i did when i growing up i was into and still am into a lot of email music rock and roll um pop rock punk rock type of music and so for me when i hear rock and roll or, or rock star that's where my mind goes very heavy guitar very heavy metal type sounding and so the rock version of this song is something that i actually listen to a lot more than the polished version um and um that's just my own personal beliefs on it i just like that version better which is kind of weird because normally i like the regular version over like another version of the title stack song or whatever whatever like think of jungkook like jungkook standing next to you i like the original version more than i like the other versions of standing next to you and the same with like 3d um and the same with seven i like i normally like the original version rather than another version so this is kind of deviating from normally what i would like um i like the la 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 rock version more because honestly that's what i was expecting more and you can i actually um i actually reacted to the music video so i'll definitely put that also in the title the the the, the cards and then i'll also put it down below but i also did a, um, a reaction video to la, la 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 and um i even mentioned in there that i like I was think I was I was expecting more rock heavy sound than it really is and then I went to go listen to the full album and I'm like oh there is a rock version <laughs> so so that's the reason why like I just like that version better than the other so next um also ooh, before I stop before I move on the meaning of this song is not that deep as well it's really just about making music having fun dancing etc cetera, etc cetera. so not much of a deeper meaning very lighthearted songs and like and I like that a lot next on the album is blind spot Blind Spot is really a song that touches on a greater issue in K-pop, I think, where people look at success in numbers, number of albums sold, number of YouTube views, number of, number of streams, and forget that there's a lot of hard work behind being successful. Um, and the people who create this music always have the fear of the fear of failure. What if the next album doesn't sell as well? Maybe it doesn't get as many streams. Maybe it doesn't get as many YouTube views. Um, and that is a real, a real fear, I should say, that people who create um, content or create music um, it is a fear of theirs that maybe the next one isn't going to be as big as this one. Um, especially when you're someone like Stray Kids who, who always do better next album after the next album. Like it's always that fear that maybe this album isn't going to do as well as the last one. They also talked about that failure and if it comes, when it comes, that they are still going to move forward and continue creating music and stomp it out and just move forward because you can't dwell on failures and honestly what what constitutes as a failure in music because music is so objective um sorry not uh, subjective subjective music is so subjective so honestly someone may view something as a failure but you view it as a success um so it's really such a great song if you are 
someone who creates content or is in the creative field and it's something to just relate to. Now I'm moving on to the next song in the album, which is called Com Flex. Um, this song is just more about embracing your flaws and turning them into strengths. And also that flaws makes us human. <laughs> um, and instead of hiding those, we should be embracing our flaws and even showing them off a little bit. Like, hey, you know, I, like I said in my, um, in my New Year's video, you know, I have a flaw of being lazy and procrastination and it is just is what it is and the best thing that i can do is to reveal that to people but also to work on those because you can embrace those flaws and learn from them and grow from them and become a better you and so i think this song is such a great song in just talking about turning your flaws into your strengths rather than allowing them to swallow you up because i could sit and be like well i'm lazy and procrastination so i guess i won't do a video today and i guess i won't edit like don't get me wrong like I, even today i was supposed to get up do a bunch of stuff and film edit all types of stuff it is now 4 p.m this video is supposed to go up on monday so what am i gonna do i'm gonna have to muster the strength that I've had, okay? Film this video, edit this video tonight so I can get it up Monday because that is what I wanna do. And even though that it is my flaw, it doesn't mean that I can allow for my flaws to consume me or be, let's just say, let it be who I am. Now, moving on to the next song on the album, which is called Cover Me. And actually, this is my favorite song of the album, not only just by how it sounds, but also the meaning of the song. Um, this song deals with the topic of loneliness and hiding that loneliness. Um, it also touches a lot on hiding, you know, other fears and struggles and how like if you hide those, you can fall. Not only like fall into a depression, fall into the cycle of hiding your struggles from people and it could just hurt you more rather than helping you so in there it in the song it really really talks about revealing um those fears and those loneliness um and and not allowing those struggles to consume you um, and it also talks about how, like, even if you do fall into that depressive, that depressive state or whatever, you can get out of it. You can overcover, overcome it. And I think it's just a very beautiful song. It's beautifully sung and I think it's beautifully written and I really like it a lot. Now, moving on to the next song on the album, which is Leave. This song is basically a breakup song. I couldn't find any other meaning about it, but it really is just a breakup song and realizing that even though you have so much love for someone, sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. So the best thing that you can do for yourself is just separate. And even though, and even though you realize that does not necessarily mean that like it hurts any less than a breakup where there is a bunch of turmoil. There with hold on. I did not know. How can I help you? Oh, I was just literally thinking, like, I just saw a TikTok or a real Instagram reel. It's probably a TikTok. And this girl was like, I can't wait for Skia's third world tour so that during La La La, I can sing, I can scream, God, full jog. And I said, oh my God, that's so true. Because when I tell you, if we in that stadium, here, I'm sorry. I know you want to move out of June. Baby, I'm going to need you to save right now. I am saving money. Because we're getting 
I want to get sound check. I want to get right there. I want they. I want. I want. I want the opportunity for them to see me. Okay, it's seen. Okay, I, well at least I need to be close. You know I got bad eyesight. Yeah. Mm, well then it's gonna be your job to get the tickets because I don't fucking know how they do their shit. It's Ticketmaster. Okay. No, my thing is, like, do they do, like, pre-sale? Mm. Oh, that shit just drops, and that's just it. Yeah, and you have to get in the queue. I'll take it, Master. I don't even know what I was saying. I got interrupted by my sister talking about the Stray Kids album. I may keep that Stray Kids concert. I may keep it, and I may I may take that out. Uh, it depends on how I feel. But, um... Let's go ahead and move on to the next album, the next song in the album, which is Social Path. This is actually was a Japanese release, um, but this is the Korean version. I, on the other hand, listen to the Korean, I mean, I listen to the, the Japanese version more than I listen to the Korean version. Is what it is but this song is really just about giving up on your youth or what people deem a normal life to follow your dreams and then through determination seeing your dreams come come true um it also touches on um it also touches a lot on getting over your fear of failure and in your self-doubt um Overall, I really like the song a lot. I liked it during the Japanese release, <laughs> so I have no problems with it. But really, overall, I think it's a solid album from Stray Kids. Um, they always produce really good work. Um, I will just say, I really wasn't into Case 143, which is that Maxident. I really wasn't into that album all like that. I mean, there was a couple songs that I really liked, but even then now, I, I really don't listen to any of the songs on that album. Like, I still listen to, oh my God, what was Maniac's album? Whichever song had Maniac, that album I still listen to. But, and their skids players. Their skids players, I really do listen to, like, a lot. I really do listen to a lot of songs from their skids players. But other than that, that is it. Um, the album was solid and I may keep in me and my sister talking about Stray Kids concert because they um, released that. I'm so confused because AT's also released that they're going on tour this year. So I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm supposed to be saving money, moving out, being better on my finances, paying off debt. And then now I got Stray Kids in the AT's concert that I would love to go to. But I heard AT is actually starting in Europe and not the U.S. So pray that that's what they do and they come to the U.S. later on this year. Because if they come to the U.S. later on this year, then I have proper time to plan. But if it's around the same time, I'm going to have to choose. I'm going to have to choose. I can't do both. So, but that's really it um i will be doing these at least once a month um well this month it'll be twice but whatever it is what it is this month uh this month they'll have two i'll have this one and i'll have ats in like a couple weeks so um so but these will be mostly once a week once a week oh my lord once a month these will be mostly once a month um i haven't chosen what i'm gonna do next month depending on what k-pop releases are coming out i may just pick one um but other than that we're done so please don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below i'll see you guys in the next one bye, -bye. somebody is arguing outside my house